Hey guys, welcome back. In the last tutorial, I was looking at a general overview of the production report, and I walked you through the five different stages that we're going to encounter when constructing a production report. So I've got this example problem right here, and I wanted to work through it with you so that you know how to do it on a test or an exam. So let's go ahead and read the information. GlaxoSmithPine is a pharmaceutical drug producer. Each product goes through three processes, mixing, encapsulating, and bottling. All processes use the weighted average method for process costing. All manufacturing inputs are added uniformly. The following are unit and cost information. So right away we know that we're producing pharmaceutical drugs, that there are three stages to our production, which are mixing, encapsulating, and bottling pharmaceutical drugs, and that we're going to be using the weighted average method as opposed to the FIFO method. So let's go ahead and start by writing the company name GlaxoSmithPine Incorporated and say what type of report it is. It's a production report and say for the period in which we're conducting this uh, or preparing this production report. So for the month ended January 31st, 2018. And step number one is going to be preparing a physical units schedule. Let me just quickly highlight this in green, keep everything nicely organized. And what we're going to be doing in this schedule is we're going to be reconciling all the units that are either in BWIP or in production uh, and then units that we've started and then reconcile that with units that are complete that have been transferred out of the process and that still remain in the process, so our eWIP account. So I'm going to say units, uh, units to account for and then start with BWIP, say units started, then I'm going to restate units to account for, and then I'm going to say units accounted for, and say units completed, and eWIP. And then I'm going to restate units accounted, oh I meant to say units accounted for up there. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're going to be looking at BWIP first. So BWIP has 100,000 kilograms. We're gonna add that to uh, that box. And unit started, do we have that information from this problem? Doesn't look like it. Looks like we only have units started and completed, which is different. Um, so units started and completed, 370,000. And eWhip is going to be 50,000 kilograms uh, left in eWhip. So we know that the total units accounted for should be 420,000. So that's how much we should have started with. And then we can solve for the units started. So we're just going to take the units to account for, subtract what we have that's already in beginning work and process, and the units that we've started at the beginning of the process are 320,000. So that's just your, your physical unit schedule, reconciling the two, uh, making sure that the units that we started with um, are accounted for with how much units that we've completed and how many units remain in eWhip. Let's move on to step step two. Step two, which is uh, calculating the equivalent units. So calculate the equivalent units. So in process costing, we're going to have some incomplete and some complete units in a process. Now, if we only accounted for the completed units, it might, it might understate the amount of total units that we have, um, because those incomplete units aren't nothing. They're, they're, some, they're, they're, partially, they're partially completed units. So we want to find what all those incomplete and the completed units are equivalent to. So let's start off by saying, saying units completed. And I'm going to separate direct materials 
from conversion costs. And I should quickly, because you can see here in, in uh, the question that the direct materials are 100% complete, um, but the conversion costs aren't. So we need to take that into consideration. Now, the reason why we use conversion costs are because that sometimes we have direct labor that's an insignificant amount that can sometimes just be coupled with manufacturing overhead. And in this case, um, it's, it's small enough for us to group that with manufacturing overhead um, and just recognize it as conversion costs. So the units completed um, is always going to be the, the, the units that we've completed in the physical unit schedule, which is 370,000. Because units that are complete, we're not going to transfer out a unit unless it is complete. Um, and then we're going to look at, at uh, units in ending work in process. So ending work in process, we have 50,000 kilograms that are 100% complete with respect to direct materials. So we're going to add 50,000. But for conversion costs, they're only 60% complete. So that's going to be 30,000. And that's going to be our equivalent units. So this is going to be the sum of that and 370,000, 420,000 equivalent units. And then the sum of that plus 370,000, 400,000 units. Um, so I'm just going to bold these and make a little border around that. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have our equivalent units, we can go about calculating our cost per equivalent unit. Cost per equivalent unit. And your cost per equivalent unit is similar to your unit cost, just it's for an equivalent unit. So we're going to be looking at costs in beginning work in process. Um, and then we're going to be adding uh, costs added in January. So when using the weighted average method, we're going to look at all of the costs that we already have in BWIP and then all the costs that we've added and just, just um, add them together when looking for our cost per equivalent unit which is different from FIFO. In FIFO, we're not going to include the costs from BWIP, and I'll get to that in the next video. So costs in beginning work and process are 20,000 for direct materials. And for conversion costs, it's 10,000 and 30,000 for labor and manufacturing overhead. Sorry, was that 30? Yeah, 30,000. So I'm going to add those there. And then how about the costs added in January? Well, we've got direct materials of 211,000. And then conversion costs. Oh, I actually should copy and paste those titles so you know what I'm referring to. Um, for conversion costs, it's 100,000 and 270,000 and 270,000. So this is going to be costs in BWIP, BWIP and added in January. And we're going to just find the sum of that. So 231,000 for direct materials and for, oh, whoops. For conversion costs, it's going to be four hundred and ten thousand. So we're going to take our total cost base, and we're going to divide that by the equivalent 
units that we calculated in the previous step. So for direct materials, it's 420,000, and for conversion costs, it's 400,000. And then we can find our cost per equivalent unit. So we're going to take the 231,000, divide that by 420,000 equivalent units, and you're going to get 55 cents uh, per equivalent unit. While for conversion costs, it's going to be 410 divided by 400,000, which is a dollar and three cents. So that's your cost per equivalent unit. I'm going to highlight these with a box as well. And we're going to move on to the fourth step, which is find the cost of goods transferred out and ending work in process valuation. This is step four, and before continuing on with that, I should just quickly uh, find the sum of the cost per equivalent unit for direct materials and conversion costs. So I'm just gonna add those two together to get my total cost per equivalent unit. Let me just quickly make a border for that. And we're gonna move on to step four. So cost of goods transferred out will be the first one that we do. So this is all of the this is all the costs associated with the product that we've transferred out from one process to another or from one process to finished goods. So we've moved 370,000 units out. They've been transferred out. Um, and we're going to multiply that by the cost per equivalent unit, which is $1.58. And that's going to give us uh, 584600 So that is all the costs associated with the goods transferred out. Now let's look at our uh, the costs associated with all our ending work in process. So I'm going to have to split this category up into direct materials and conversion costs. Um, since there is a different amount of ending work in process for direct materials, and conversion costs. You can see 50,000 and 30,000. So for the first one, 50,000 units multiplied by the cost per equivalent unit for direct materials. So that's 55 cents. Let's go ahead and calculate that. 27,500. And then for conversion costs, it's going to be 30,000 multiplied by $1.03. So that is going to be 30,900 and then the, the sum to find our total ending work in process is going to be 58,400. So that's step four. Uh, we've accounted for the cost of goods transferred out and the costs associated with ending work in process. Let's move on to step five, which is just reconciling the costs, and then we're done. So step five is going to be cost reconciliation. And it's going to look similar to the, um, the physical unit schedule, except that we're going to do it for costs instead of units. So costs to account for, and then we're going to say BWIP and then costs added uh, during January, then restate costs to account for, and then below it we'll say costs accounted for, and then use the cost of goods transferred out, which we've uh, calculated in the previous step, and our um, costs for ending work in process. And then I'm just gonna restate it again, costs counted for. Okay, so we know our cost of goods transferred out. We can just copy and paste that. Oh, maybe not, so I guess I'll just write it out. Um, and ending work in process is going to be 58,400. So we know that the sum of both of those will be 643,000. So 
the cost to account for will be 643,000 as well. So now we can look at the cost to account for for our BWIP accounts. So in the information provided, we can see that the direct materials are 20,000, the labor is 10, uh, the overhead is 30. So altogether, that is 60,000. And then the remaining costs must be the costs added uh, during January. Um, and we can, we can look at that uh, from the question. So cost added during the month, 211, 100 is 311, and then we have 511, and then that's 581. So 581,000. And then just to double check, we can say equals sum is 60,000 plus 581,000. And well, it seems like there's a $2,000 difference, which um, is due to the fact that our cost per equivalent unit for conversion costs was rounded up. So you can see if I move the decimal place that it's actually a dollar and two and a half uh, cents. So uh, that accounts for the difference between 643,000 and 641,000. So, oh, I totally misspelled reconciliation. Perfect. Um, so that is your production report. This is it entirely. Let me just, there we go. Final product. All right. Um, in the next one, we're going to be looking at the FIFO method of process costing and preparing a production budget for that method. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.